Denmark is not what we expected. A few weeks ago, we knew very little about Denmark. Despite having visited twice before, we realized we knew next to nothing about the country outside of Copenhagen and its surroundings. In fact, we only really came here to catch the ferry to Norway. But once we arrived, we discovered one of the most underrated countries we visited, home to some of Europe's best beaches, cold Hawaii, and even a desert. And before we knew it, our quick trip turned into three weeks. After spending an incredible week exploring the Danish island of Rusland, we're now traveling through Denmark of the west coast of Jutland, from the German border all the way up to the northern tip, where we'll catch the ferry to Norway. Our first stop is Reef, which is apparently the oldest city in Denmark and also in actually the whole of Scandinavia as well. So we're just going to go and have a wander around and see what it's like. This post here is a storm pole which shows all of the major floods that have happened here and the one at the top in 1634 is crazy how high that is it's higher than like all the buildings and everything but in the early 1900s they built a dike here and then they haven't had any floods since then this city has just been a nice place to wander around it's a quaint medieval city with lots of these red and yellow half timber houses which are just really nice to look at and you can just wander around all the streets and they're all quite nice now we're moving on This spot right here is the westernmost point of Denmark and it's another massive beach and also more of these bunkers here as well. Over the next few days we continue to drive up the west coast of Denmark, discovering more of the landscape of forests, giant sand dunes and never-ending white sand beaches. We've continued to drive up north up the west coast of Denmark and now we're at Bovbjerg Lighthouse and here is the first time since we've been in Denmark that we have seen land that is not either completely flat or just sand dunes. There's actually some cliffs here which is really nice and we've been walking along the cliff top and we've also walked along the beach or I've walked along the beach because there's steps down the cliff uh, but it's been crazy windy here, really really windy and we could hardly hear each other talk could we? Yeah, it was, it was really loud. But really nice views. Now we're going to continue on further up the coast. Denmark has a stretch of coastline known as Cold Hawaii, which is a bit of a surface paradise. The wave and wind conditions here are perfect for all sorts of water spots. We spent all afternoon in Vorapur watching the kite surfers. It was crazy to see how much air some of them were getting. We have just had one of the craziest experiences. We are at a place called Rubjerg Nude and there is a lighthouse up there on top of a sand dune but it has got to be I think the most windiest place I have ever been I don't think I've ever experienced wind like this really really hard to get up there it's like 20-30 minute walk and gosh it just felt like it took forever I feel like it was the hardest walk I've ever done even though it was really short just because was, the wind was so strong like pushing you back and on top of that it's on a sand dune so the sand was blowing constantly so the main reason to visit this place is to see the lighthouse and this lighthouse is about 100 years old but it used to be 70 meters further out towards the edge of the cliff than it is now but they actually had to move it back because it was so close to the edge and with the sand eroding and everything it would have been very much at risk of falling off into the water so they had to reinforce the base and then essentially put it on these like huge roller skates and roll it back 70 meters We're in the Danish desert, the Rabjerg Mile, and I've learned from yesterday, so I'm wearing this ridiculous outfit to protect my eyes from the sand blowing in them. This sand dune here is apparently one of the biggest in Northern Europe and maybe in Europe, depending on which source you look at. So we're not entirely sure which facts are true, but it's about a kilometer squared, so it is pretty big and it moves 15 meters every year from the wind blowing the sand across it slowly moves across and you can definitely sort of see that that's possible when you're up there and you see the wind and the sand blowing and although I looked absolutely ridiculous up there in my sunglasses and hat I was definitely glad that I'd brought those sunglasses because it really saved my eyes 
It's predicted that eventually the sand dune is going to move so much that it's going to come over and cover this main road that we're on right now. And they've been trying to stop the sand moving so much by planting some grasses and stuff to try and stop it and slow it down. But they think eventually it's going to come this far. This is the first time we've actually been on a road since we've been in Denmark that has two lanes, like one for overtaking. We've found that the whole time we've been here, we've really enjoyed driving here because it's been nice and quiet. There's not much traffic on the road. This thing here is known as the Sandbury Church and it's only the steeple, the tower part of the church that's left. So originally when we were reading about it online, it sounded like sand had kept coming and it was burying the church and basically all that's left is the steeple because the rest of the church is underground. However, now that we've got here, the sign says that actually sand kept coming and every time they wanted to go to church, they had to dig it out and it was just so much of a faff, it wasn't worth it. So they ended up demolishing the rest of the church and they just left this bit here just as like a, a landmark. I think it's safe to say that since we've been here in Denmark, we've never seen so many sand dunes in our entire lives. Since we, we came like across the border from Germany all the way up now to the north, there's just been sand dunes everywhere and neither of us realized that Denmark like had such a sandy landscape. It's been really interesting to see. This right here is the northernmost point of Denmark and I can't see anybody else around at all right now so I guess that makes me the northernmost po person in Denmark right now. This is goodbye to Denmark for now. We're now in Hetzel's ferry terminal and we're taking the ferry to Lavik in Norway but we might come back to Denmark again on our way back before we go back to the UK but for now this is it so we'll see you in Norway.